Okay, so yeah, I'm Axel from, from Google, um, presenting on just some updates around MGLRU. And uh, also, you know, I don't have 15 minutes of content. I'm hoping to collect feedback, the group's interest in this topic, right? Um, so for anybody who hasn't been paying attention to this area, uh, I'll briefly describe what MGLRU is. It's an alternative to the classic active and inactive LRUs. The basic idea is to split the lists up into multi-tier, multi-generational LRUs. Um, roughly ordered by access recency. So each of these generations, which is a list of pages or folios these days, uh, has a birth time stamp, which allows recency comparison across uh, LRUs. So you can compare age uh, from a file on a non-LRU, for example. Uh, one of its key selling points is to optimize aging and generation updates uh, by efficiently scanning, forward scanning the page tables. So it's very cache friendly. Uh, and another big idea it has is to simplify reclaim between a non-file LRUs using a refault eviction based PID controller. So in terms of the current status of MGLRU, it was merged in 6.1, um, so almost two years ago now. Various major distros enable this by default. So Debian, Fedora, and Ubuntu. Uh, and within Google, you know, we've adopted this by default in Android and Chrome OS as well. Uh, so one of the things I've been working on a lot lately is adopting this in the Google production fleet. So historically, Google ran this thing called KSTLD for time-based proactive aging and reclaim. The idea is it scans memory periodically. It keeps track of which pages have been accessed. Uh, it scans in physical page order with RMAP lookups, so it's very cache unfriendly. Uh, so kind of as a first step to transitioning to MGLRU, we added a small wrapper around it so it can sort of emulate some of the KSTLD interfaces. Um, we extended it to allow periodic aging. So normally MGLRU will only do aging and look at the access bit um, when it needs to, sort of an eviction time, for example. We changed it so you can say on a fixed interval every every couple of minutes go ahead and scan and create a new generation and then we extended it so you can say reclaim everything older than a certain time uh, so this kind of shim around mgru is running in dual production today at least a fraction of it uh, and so far the results have been great we got the same memory savings we were getting with case DLD with vastly less cpu overhead like 5x less cpu overhead um, one of the other things we've been working on is extending it with, uh, to scan KDM's MMU secondary page tables. So we can do working set reporting and proactive reclaim for VMs as well. Uh, one of the important things this series also does is it makes the scan lockless. So this drastically reduces KDM MMU lock latency or lock contention. Uh, so I have a link here to the patch series. This is James Hewton's work. Uh, on the mailing list, and then the lock contention benchmark. That was something Yu Zhao posted in an earlier version. Um, so kind of one of the things I wanna do in this, in this talk is just collect what are some of the lingering problems or use cases that are not addressed that are sort of blockers for adopting MGLRU in more places. Um, there are a couple things we know about. There's been some discussion on the mailing list where you can get um killed too early if write back falls behind. For example, if you're in a memory constrained C group and you're writing to a slow IO device. Um, so there's a fix posted upstream for this. Basically the idea is when we go to scan and we find all the pages are dirty, we wake up the flushers. Um, I think this does fix the issue at hand, but there's some lingering areas of improvement that could be done here. Um, one is just smarter decisions about when to wake up. Another is smarter throttling or also just deciding who's in charge of throttling right back, right? I've heard some people say, well, the, the person doing the wake ups should be the one to not wake up and throttle in that sense, or there's the C group level right back throttling we have as well. Um, Kind of another constraint is today MGLRU has these dependencies in kconfig, so you can only enable it on 64-bit systems, for example. Um, the basic problem here is lack of page flags. MGLRU needs at least three bits. So a proposal here to free up some bits to enable it even on 32-bit is 
to put some of the bits in the LRU pointer low bits. Um, we think page active and page unevictable are great candidates for that and possibly page, page swap back. Um, and then, yeah, yeah I'm interested, interested to hear, to hear any problems the audience has. Uh, uh, kind of, so, so problems, problems or bugs is one side of it, but the other side of it is just supporting different use cases. Um, so, so one big use case, case MGLRU, as it sits in the upstream kernel today, doesn't uh, kind of address is proactive reclaim and aging like I was talking about. So the sort of case still the emulation thing I mentioned isn't really the best interface. It's not maybe what upstream <laughs> would like. Really, the purpose of it is to is to match Google's existing stuff. But we have uh, Yuanchu has been working on this series upstream, which we think is a much better interface for this, um, his working set reporting series. So this, so this does, does some, some similar, similar things, things right? right? It, it, it generalizes the active and active counts to arbitrary time intervals. So you can, you can for a given amount of coldness time, reclaim those pages. Um, it gives you per C group, per NUMA node, and then per type of memory working set information. Um, and he's working also on benchmarks that kind of show the usefulness with concrete data, and then also interested in ballooning for VMs. That's another area where we think proactive reclaim could be pretty useful. Um, another idea is just the MGLRU and the reclaim path generally is full of a lot of heuristics. Uh, these heuristics may not be perfect for all workloads or all use cases. So there's an idea that perhaps some of this can be implemented in BPF. That way you can customize it if you have a workload or use case that's not you know, properly addressed by MGLRU out of the box. Um, we think that kind of an extension would be especially useful for other hyperscalers besides Google to adopt MGLRU since they have pretty may have pretty particular requirements. Um, so yeah, for the last seven minutes we've got, I was hoping for some discussion. If anybody has any questions or you have problems with MGLRU, let me know. Um, yeah, I don't know if you caught the talk earlier, but there was a talk um, by the author of Damon, and I see some overlap here, like specifically around things like proactive reclaim and working set size reporting. I'm keen to know what are the similarities and differences, and if somebody wants to get working set size information, which tool should they use and why? Yeah, and maybe, SJ, you can also comment on this. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah so, so when, when, when we, we were doing this, we did evaluate both multi-gen LRU and Daemon, uh, kind of to see which one would be a better solution for us. Um, I think in the end, we went with MGLRU just because it, it matched better our existing way of doing things. Um, I think I think also uh, Way is on the call here, and he did the evaluation. He could probably provide a lot more details. Sorry to throw him under the bus. Um, or Shanjay, if you have comments about that. So, uh, uh, this is Way. Uh, so, I think at that time when we did the evaluation, uh, one of the main uh, feature we were looking at, uh, which is supported mu uh, much better by multi-gen, is that uh, we are doing the system-wide monitoring. So because we are interested in, uh, say, swap out the code memory to save memory cost from a system perspective. But I, I think uh, at that point, uh, demo is large, a lot more focused on Process, process level view of, uh, of of page heart and the code information. Basically, uh, uh, that's basically a much f um, different uh, granularity, which we don't deal with at that time. Uh, so uh, another thing is that uh, uh, for us is that uh, because multi-gen uh, as a new uh, LRU replacement, uh, we, we, we're gonna deploy that uh, in, in a fleet uh, so that the getting the working set information now become like uh, just additional interface uh, wrapped around that. 
so that we don't have to do like a pay table scanning uh, like in two different kind of contexts. There's also like uh, uh, some kind of, in, uh, I mean, interaction problems there. So I think probably still need to be sorted out. So basically the cost perspective, that's another angle uh, can, can be considered. The third angle here is that uh, uh, the multi-gen, uh, the working set information actually is uh, integrated well with LIO itself. Basically, if we want to, if we want to leverage the working set information to do the reclaim, uh, we the, the page that reclaim actually will be consistent with what we see from working set reporting. But with demo, I think all of this structure uh, managed uh, separately. I think uh, there's a I think a lower level de integration uh, for, for our use cases. Uh, I, I think uh, does that kind of at least I uh, shared my uh, what are we we are thinking and uh, I think people we have different opinions on, on this matter. I would like to hear. I mean, the the uh, people thought as well. Sorry, I didn't catch that question. For some reason, the audio from the room wasn't coming through for me. I didn't catch it then. Ah, there we, there go. we go. Yeah, do you have any roadmap for MGLRU to replace the traditional LRU so we don't have two different LRU implementations? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't I know about a concrete, concrete roadmap. roadmap. Um, I, th I, th I think basically, basically getting, getting rid of, of the active inactive LRU requires, requires figuring out everybody, everybody who isn't supported, supported by MGLRU and, and fixing all of those issues. issues. Um, I think an easier, easier lift is probably, probably setting it as the default in kconfig. I mean, because of course, course folks, folks can always can change, change that, that if they if they see fit, but that, that might help at least move some users over who just like there may be a subset, subset of users who just have not been paying attention and don't have a strong feeling, right? right. So, so maybe setting the default, default can help with that. But yeah, that's that's kind of my goal here. I think the first step is to identify all of the gaps, so then we can work on fixing them. I think, I think basically, basically just, just to uh, kind of add on or repeat what I uh, actually just mentioned, there's, 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 there's a, a known problem, problem slide, slide and then, and then the, the second bullet point of this new use case slide, slide. I think uh, uh, it probably will be required uh, for us to reach uh, that state, basically, to have only one uh, the kernel implementation. Yeah, I mean, if there's anybody else who, you know, inside your organization or, or your distro that you work on or anything like that, if you haven't adopted MJU, I'd be curious to know why, like what's missing? What can we do to support your use case properly? Um, but yeah. 